Welcome back, everybody, to the No Warning Show. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Trinidad and Tobago has sent in an Olympic contingent to Japan to represent us for the, well, what is being called the 2020 Olympics, despite that we are in 2021, because as we all know, we did not have one in 2020 due to the pandemic. Joining us this morning is the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee, Brian Lewis, and we are going to chat about just that, the team that has gone out there. Good morning, Mr. Lewis. Good morning to you. Good morning to your viewers. Good morning. Welcome. Morning, morning. <laughs> Thank you for being with us this morning. Now, of the team, uh, of the contingent, rather, it's a 57-member contingent, as per the article posted by the Newsday. Uh, how, how accurate is that, just, just for clarity? Yeah, it's, uh, it's accurate in the sense of it's 30 athletes. Um, you have the TTOC management team, which is two. Um, Chef de Mission, Lovely Santana, COVID-19 laser officer, Visa Grant, which is a requirement of um, Tokyo 2020 and the IOC. You have the 30 athletes, you have a, a eight member medical staff um, led by Chief Medical Officer, the um, Dr. Ramsawa. It includes Dr. Nyla Adams, female, and um, from the, for the athletic contingent, Dr. Anil Gopi Singh, physiotherapist and uh, massage therapist. And then in the seven sports, you have individual coaches. Um, the largest contingent of coaches is uh, the athletics contingent, right? There are various disciplines, yeah. So it's, it's accurate. And uh, of course, we have our son of the soil. Uh, Kishon Walcott, who has done us quite well in the Olympics before, and he is out to represent us once more. Uh, what is the feeling like amongst the athletes and, well, the entire contingent, really, there in Tokyo? Of course, the, the athletes are, I guess, are sort of relieved for those who have been selected. Of course, given the disruption posed by COVID-19, there is some disappointment in, in those who may not have, have been selected. Um, of course, the individual national sporting organization would have submitted their nominations for selection. Um, but uh, there, there is, I, I think, almost a sense of relief now that they have crossed this little. It's like being on a, on a, on a ship in a, in a storm. Right. And um, it, it, it's, it seems never ending. But now the bridge have suggested signal that we are seeing land a bit down the horizon, but it's, it's, we're not out of the woods. As every day, there is something different, but for the Team TTO going out, it, it, it represents a symbol of hope and a brighter future. Um, now that we are all, even as a nation, seeing the silver lining a little bit in, in right. COVID, while well, we have to be on guard because of the Delta variants, but uh, you know, as we vaccine our way out of it and Team TTO has taken that approach, striving to get 100% of the team vaccinated. Definitely, definitely. Now, one thing that was most notable is that we don't have a representative this year for the men's 100 meter. What, what was the difference this time around that we don't have a uh, an athlete for that sport, that one that we are usually quite strong at? Isn't that something? Since uh, Hazley Crawford, Hazley Crawford was actually the first Caribbean sprinter to win a gold medal. Um, most people hear so much about you saying good, etc. Yeah. But it was Hazley Crawford was the was the pioneer in that, um, and uh, so we have had a tradition. So it's since 1988, we in the Seoul Olympics when we had two representatives from track and field athletics in Patrick Delis and Ian Morris in the 400 meter that we haven't had representatives in the individual. Um, 100 meters, and that yeah. ought to be a concern for us. Um, and I don't think it, 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 it is okay. I've seen comments to that effect, um, but it's Lewis, not okay. We, we, see, we see people like Richard Thompson on the team. How come he's not um, going up for the men's 100? Well, it's because qualification. The qualification okay. time set mm -hmm. by the World Athletics is 10.05. Mm -hmm. So no Trinidad and Tobago men really, men, sorry, sprinter, had met that qualifying time, which is a disappointment. It is a reflection on, you know, we need to look at something differently because that that is a, that is a, not a good sign. 
But do you think that, that the COVID-19, the pandemic, had a part to play in that in terms of people may have been ready for a particular time and then they had to do no, adjustments? And, no, 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 no. If you consider that the Olympics were scheduled for 2020 mm-hmm. and therefore the qualification period, no, we have, we, have, we have been struggling a bit in recent years. And I think it is something the entire sport ecosystem here in Trinidad and Tobago, including the Olympic Committee, the NAAAs, the Ministry of Sport, Sport Company, everybody needs to... Need, um, it, it's a wake-up call. It's not something that we could comfortably accept, given the tradition and sprints, whether it is here to call for that to bold and everything. But um, we are in the 4 by 100 meter men's relay. But again, you look at the other countries and the times they are doing you know, it. Is, it, is, it is a bit... So tell me, tell me something, for those who may not understand or may not know, uh, what's the difference? How do we qualify for the relay, but we don't qualify for any individuals? All right, the relay team, good question. Excellent question. The 4 by 100 meter relay team would have qualified by virtue of performances in the past during the period. So it is like the 4 by 100 meter women's, 4 by 100 meter um, men, 4 by 400 meters men. What would have happened is on the basis of a time done, that time done by 4 by 100 meter men's relay team at a time during the qualification period and recognized and sanctioned by World Athletic would have figured in the top 16. I think, to be honest, we either ended up about 15th or 16th. So that is by virtue. So the team would have qualified the country so that once that is done, and if you don't have an individual qualifier, then the, the um, N, in this case, the N3 aid would have had to pick based on times or usually they, they, it's picked on the basis of the National Senior Championship. Right. When it comes, I'm going to go back to that issue of there not being a representative for the men's 100 meter individual. I've got no coffee. <laughs> Very nice. So your morning is a little brighter now. Now, when it comes to the men's 100 meter, um, we have no lack of talent and athleticism in Trinidad and Tobago. What do you think is the disconnect? Why uh, there seem to be that problem or, or, or lapse rather? Um, in maybe training, selection, or coaching. I don't know what the, the issue is. What, what do you think is the disconnect there and why for the past few years we've been faltering when it comes to the 100 meter? It, it is something I think that the N3As in particular needs to look at. Um, you know, even if you look at, at our performances at the Carifta Games, it's sort of trending downwards. So it's not like this should have been a surprise for the discerning person who was paying attention. Um, in one of the things about elite and Olympic sport, gentlemen, is that you can't hide it. Performance and the results tell the tale. Yeah. Right. So it's not that we don't have young talent. I think if you look at the names that have been selected for the 4 by 100 it's a lot of 20, 21-year-olds, male sprinters who are in on US scholarships. So it's a broader discussion. I don't think in the time allotted we could um, delve into it, but there may be different views. But yeah, it's a good, it's a good observation and a, and a question that demands answers. Uh, we see some people debuting for the first time inside the um, inside the Olympics this year, representing Trinidad and Tobago. Um, how do we feel about the about the new batch? Do we feel like rejuvenated? Are we excited to see their performance? You know. It's always rejuvenating, but I have to be honest, because of the COVID and the the, the, the tremendous and incredible disruptions, I feel for some of the athletes, because, you know, some of them have served so long and well, Mm -hmm. and it's not an excuse. COVID-19 may have taken away that opportunity, um, but... The younger ones have seized the day. And um, that, you know, that's the nature of, of life, but that's the nature of sport. So it's encouraging, it augurs well if they continue um, for the future. But it is important to understand that this particular games, it's not about just showing up and, and getting the kit and um, saying that you're an Olympian, you have to perform, you have to be committed. And this, this, this game in particular, because of COVID-19, demands um, huge self-discipline and personal responsibility because at the end of the day, 
We want to be able to go to represent the country with honor and pride, but safely and return safely. Definitely. Now, one of the new athletes we have um, representing us is Gabriella Wood, who's representing us in judo. You know, what is the feeling like, um, you know, to, to actually have someone represent us in martial arts? Um, I don't I don't think it's the first time, is it? No, no, it's not the first time. In fact, in 2016, Christopher George created history by being the first male judoka. And it's really great to see that Gabrielle Wood was motivated and inspired by Christopher George's uh, journey and effort, and that she has taken up the mantle to push through. It's not easy to qualify in judo, and I think it's a great inspiration and motivation for, for, for young women and young girls that, that it's not just track and field. We now right. have rowing, we now have um, judo, so it, it, it's good. And uh, also it's noteworthy that while I would have liked the team to be more gender equal, um, we do still have women, um, female athletes. We have six, six athletes in general from Tobago. So big up to Tobago again. Um, I'm a little disappointed though that in terms of the biggest cont a contingent, track and field, um, the, the, the entire coaching delegation submitted was comprising only of men. I, I, I'm a little bit concerned about that. I'm disappointed given the TTOC's features female program and focus on, on gender equality. Uh, one notable absence on the team, Mr. Lewis, is a uh, shot put athlete, Cleopatra Borrell, as you mentioned, the female athletes. Any particular reason is that she not sign up this year? Cleopatra Borrell, um, four-time Olympian, yeah. tremendous servant and service given to the country. She, it appeared, made a decision to, to withdraw herself for contention uh, and not pursue qualification. But there are other notable names. Um, of course, of course. Such as Keston Blenman, Emmanuel Callender, um, you know, that, that I, if I'm being honest, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the swim, the swim in input this year from Dylan Carter as well as um, from Sherelle Thompson. I know we did a feature yeah, on Sherelle. Thompson Cheryl. is a universality place, so I know that Dylan Carter is, 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 is showing some good form mm -hmm. as a cyclist. Yeah. Nicholas Paul Nicholas and Lucy uh, Brown and Tanil Campbell. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a fantastic time, and I, I wish the team all the best as they represent Trinidad and Tobago in this Olympics going forward because I know it's going to be trying and it's going to try on their, on their mental discipline. Definitely. But... And uh, they're carrying the weight of the country on their shoulders. Yeah. Oh Lord, you know that is good. That is great. <laughs> right. that, that heavy, no. eh? It heavy. Right, <laughs> but I have faith. It's not easy to represent. No. Yeah, but <laughs> we're not. But I have faith that they will put their best foot forward and we'll be proud of them regardless. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank I'm you sure very you. much for having us and thank you on behalf of Team TTO. No problem, man. Take right, care. Enjoy you. the rest of your day and, and enjoy the journey. We'll talk again soon, Many I'm happy. sure. Many happy returns. Thank you. God bless. And you as well, Mr. Lewis. All right, guys. We'll take a quick break and come back with more Inside the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.